So we're done looking at all the different examples and subclasses of our task gang framework customized for barrier synchronization. Now we're going to wrap things up and we're going to summarize the key points of the lesson and then show how to run the app and look at the output. So first, just kind of summarizing this case study shows how you can specialize the task gang framework to showcase different Java barrier synchronizer capabilities. In particular, we showed how we can use a Java countdown latch as an exit barrier. And we use that to allow one or more thread objects to wait for the completion of a set of word searches performed in other thread objects. That was a very simple way of doing things. And it also only worked for one shot. We only got it to do it one time for one list of input words. We then used Java cyclic barrier for several purposes. The most obvious one was to allow a fixed number of thread objects to wait for each other to reach a common barrier point during a multi-cycle search for words. And then we also used cyclic barrier with the cyclic search with phaser to coordinate the reconfiguration of a task gang when the number of input string objects and thread objects change from one cycle to the next. So we got to use that in two different ways. And and then finally, we use the Java phaser, which is the more flexible type of barrier synchronizer. And that's because we could use it to wait for a variable number of thread objects to wait for all the operations and other thread objects to complete before their word searches uh, are done before it proceeds. So this is a more flexible form of barrier synchronizer that allows a variable number of thread objects to wait for all operations and other thread objects to complete their word searches before it proceeds. As always, we also use a number of gang of four and post of patterns. I didn't really focus a lot on them here, but if you look carefully at what we walked through, you could see things like template method was used. We obviously used a resource pool. We used other mechanisms in order to be able to coordinate things and create things like factory method and so on. So these are all just common patterns that you would find when developing Java code, either object oriented and or functional code. Let's now go ahead and show what happens when we run the command line version of this, and we'll take a look at the output. So here we are back in my barrier task gang project and the barrier task gang project can be launched by clicking the green arrow and running the barrier task gang configuration and you can see it compiles and runs and what happens here is we start by running the one shot countdown latch and it starts the one and only cycle with eight threads and we have eight threads because we've got uh, that many words we want to search. And you can see it's looking in the different threads for the given cycle. And it tells you where it found each of the search words in the words in the input data that's being searched. The next thing we do is we start the cyclic, cyclic barrier test. And you can see this time we've got two cycles. The first cycle is the cycle one, and it starts with eight threads and it processes this input. And then we go ahead and start another cycle, which also has eight threads. And you can see here, this is the second cycle and we're searching again. And this time we have slightly different searches and we're doing this multiple times. We have different search input on the same set of words. So we get matches in different places. So we do that twice because we have two cycles. And then the third time we run something, this is the cyclic phaser test. And you can see we have different cycles with different numbers of threads and different number of input elements. So the first cycle has one thread, and that's what we find. And then we do cycle number two, which has five threads versus one thread, which is what we had before. And these are the results we get. And then we'd start cycle three, which has two threads this time, rather than five threads, which we did in cycle two. These are the results that come out of that. And you can also see what happens when we go from five threads back to two threads. We're going to be throwing the index out of range exception uh, correctly. We wanted to do that. And that will be an indication to that thread. It should shut itself down gracefully because it's not needed for this particular phase. And then for cycle four, we have the same number of threads we did before. So nothing has to be shut down or created. And then cycle five, now we have only one thread versus two threads. So we have to shut one of the threads down. And then cycle six, we have three threads. So we're going to create a couple of new threads. And these are the results that we get from searching there. So you can see each time through, it tells us what happens and whether we got a match. In the case of cycle five, there were no matches at all. So there was no output at that cycle, but gives you a very useful set of diagnostic output that indicates what is going on and how the number of threads and number of items is expanding or contracting based on the input. And this is demonstrating the power of phaser, which gives you more dynamic support for handling a variable number of threads or a variable number of parties or, or elements and so on. So that wraps up our walkthrough of the barrier task gang case study. Hopefully you found the coverage of different Java barrier synchronizers useful for other projects that you may do in your own work as a Java software developer.